Hey guys, City Walk, City Wall here, in partnership with Paradox Interactive and the City Skylines official YouTube channel, and I'm here to bring you a brand new four-part tutorial series on asset creation for City Skylines. If you don't know who I am, I make City Skylines videos on YouTube. You might know me from my YouTube series, City Skylines Mars, in which I build a fictional near-future Mars colony inside of a glass dome. When I started working on this project like a year ago, I had to figure out a way to accomplish building a city on another planet in City Skylines, and obviously a lot of the assets that you might need are not available on the workshop, so it was really daunting. And my first thought was if I could get some asset creators interested in this, maybe someone could help me out, make me a big glass dome and a few other futuristic things that didn't exist already. So I hit up Lord Gruny, who's an amazing asset creator from France, but instead of creating me some assets, he really just encouraged me to make them myself. He provided me with a few videos to watch and a link to the Ronix69 website, cslmodding.info, which is a massive resource for asset creators. And at first, it did not appear like this was going to be a simple thing to try and learn, but once I actually got into it, it turned out to be much easier than I had anticipated. And now, at this point, less than a year later, I've already made around two dozen assets uh, uh, that are out on the workshop, and it's an awesome feeling knowing that if I want a specific asset for my city, I can always just make it myself. The goal of this tutorial series is to show you the fundamentals of asset creation in City Skylines. I'm going to show you how to make a building and hopefully get you started making your own assets. I'm sure at some point uh, you had a great idea for a building or a vehicle or prop, something that you wanted to use in your city but couldn't find on the Steam Workshop. So this video will show you the steps to start experimenting and creating and sharing your assets so that you can finally make your city look the exact way you want it to and others on the workshop can use that asset as well. So first off, we're going to need some software, a 3D modeling program and a photo editing program. I use Blender, which is a free modeling software, and Photoshop, which is a subscription-based photo editing software. There's also a free program called GIMP, which is just like Photoshop, so that works fine as well. And having a basic knowledge of these tools and the shortcuts is going to be key before you start here, so I would definitely recommend watching a couple of beginner tutorials on YouTube before jumping into this if you're new to those programs. Play around with it, have some fun with the tools, you know. The other thing you're going to need is a copy of City Skylines with no mods or assets installed. You can do this by either loading up the game using the dash no workshop command, which you can find how to do that on Ronix's website, or like how I do it by having a workshop collection for all the assets that are used in my city that I can unsubscribe to all those assets at once and then resubscribe to them later. Now that you have the tools, the next thing to think about is what you want to make and how it's going to function in the game. Personally, I like to make assets because I need something very specific for my city that I can't find, you know, something similar on the workshop. For example, I've just launched a new crossover Stellaris City Skylines project called Skylines Invicta with the Templin Institute and Skibbeth, where Skib and I are building the capital city in Templin's Stellaris playthrough. And the first episode is about a group of interstellar travelers who arrive at the wrong planet. They were supposed to find an already established colony, but instead they find themselves in uncharted space without many of the tools needed to survive. So for building in these early days of the colony, I've been looking for something that's a small, standalone, futuristic research building that can be put out in the wilderness, you know, all on its own. And there's a few things that sort of work. I've been using some metal sheds and this one capsule apartment prop that's amazing. But I want something that's a little bit more unique, that's on stilts maybe, and has a more explicitly futuristic feel. So I did some Googling and came across an illustration by this concept artist Andis Reinbergs and thought even though this is too futuristic and clean and white, the shape of these buildings is actually pretty similar to what I want. It's on stilts, it's got cool little details. So what I'm gonna do is sort of broad strokes base my building off the shape of this. And then for the color and texture of it, I found another image, this time by concept artist Kite Kyber, that had sort of a more worn down, wet, metal, sci-fi colors. And this is what I'm going to generally base the look and feel of it off of. For you guys, I would encourage before you start making your asset to do some research of your own. If you're basing your asset off a real thing, find some pictures of it from different angles, or if not, find some cool concept art or drawings that you can take inspiration from. 
So before anything else, I want to make a new folder for this asset, name it something unique, but without any underscores in the name, that's crucial. And I'm going to do a sort of little file structure here just to stay organized. Next, I'm going to open up Blender and make a new general file, save it in that folder structure that we just made and call it the same thing as the folder name. Next, I'll right click up at the top right here and add some new collections, which are just like folders for Blender to keep myself organized. Then I'll move this starting cube, the default cube, which just comes with the blank Blender project into the other folder and call it scale reference. And this is gonna give us a reference in Blender to how large things are in City Skylines. So in game, one grid space is an eight meter square and in Blender, a meter is one grid line. So one City Skylines tile would be eight grid spaces here in Blender. Right now, this cube is two meters, but I wanna make it roughly the same size as the building I'm gonna make in order to have a reference point for scale. So the top left, I'll go into edit mode, which is where I can actually edit the faces and vertices of the cube. And you can see here, we've got vertices, edges, and faces selection options. So I want faces. And then I'm gonna turn on snapping, which is this little magnet icon, and make sure that we have absolute grid snapping enabled, which allows us to snap to the grid that we see here around the cube. Then I can move each face here by using the G hotkey, along with either clicking on the scroll wheel or hitting the XYZ buttons on the keyboard to move it along a particular axis. So the bottom surface should be moved up so that it's not below ground. I'm gonna move the two sides uh, to negative eight and eight meter marks, which will make this thing two city skylines grid spaces wide. And then likewise, with the front and the back, I'm gonna move those to negative four and four. So in total, that's eight, and that's one grid space deep when we bring it into game. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is raise up the roof. If you were making a real building, you'd wanna measure this, but I'm just gonna eyeball it because this building is imaginary and it can be any height that I want. And at the very top right here, I'm going to hit the eye icon and turn off this layer because I'll be needing it later. The next thing to set up here is Photoshop or GIMP if you're using the free software. So I'll open that up and make a new image that's 1024 by 1024 pixels. And we can always change this later, but generally props and small things should have a smaller texture like 256 or 512 and bigger things like buildings can be a bit bigger. So 1024 or even 2048 sometimes. But the hard and fast rule here is that you wanna use only dimensions that are powers of two. So like 64 by 512 would work, 128 by 2048 would work, but not 100 by 200. So I'll make this new file, and first thing I'm gonna do is make six new folders, one for each type of texture. The diffuse texture is the most important one. It's the one that gives the model its actual color so that it's not just a white shape. But then there's also the specular texture, which gives the model varying levels of shininess, the normal texture, which is the bumpiness, the alpha texture, which is the transparency, the illumination, which is brightness, and the color texture is if you're trying to make a City Skylines asset, which can randomly turn a different color each time you place it down. And then I'm also just gonna add this random kind of UV grid texture image that I found online. Anything will work, and this isn't even 100% necessary, but it's helpful to have a grid like this uh, in your Photoshop or GIMP file so that down the road you sort of have a guide to help you figure out how you're gonna wrap this texture around your model. Cool, well for now, we're gonna put this on pause, and in the next tutorial of this four-part series, we'll begin the modeling and texturing process. I really hope you all watch this and enjoy this series and use this as encouragement to try the asset creation process yourselves because the workshop could always be bigger and better and I'm sure you've got tons of cool ideas that could be in the game. That's it from me, CityWalk City Wall, and make sure to subscribe to the City Skylines YouTube channel if you haven't already to catch the next tutorial in this series.